Good morning. It's uh, good for me to be uh, back with you after a few weeks away. And as always, it's good to be in the presence of the living God who's pleased when his people gather in his name. I hope that you're eager this morning to meet with God, uh, to be blessed by his presence, his word, and the uh, fellowship of God's people. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 118. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So let's join together in our gathering song. We look forward to the power of the Lord at work among us, and it's wonderful to receive his greeting as we gather in his name. Friends, may the grace of Christ our Savior and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let's take time to greet one another in God's rich love. Morning, Austin. Good morning. How have you been? Good. Working hard this summer? Just some words to frame our worship together. I, I just think this is a beautiful, beautiful time of year. Uh, the trees out in full leaf, uh, flowers around, and we believe that this all comes from the hand of God, our Creator, and that it reflects His beauty. So let's take uh, some moments now to worship a God of dazzling beauty.
Let's pray together. God, our God, we, we worship you here and now in this moment. Uh, as we've sung, your unfailing love for us is wonderful. And your mercy, so fully revealed at the cross where Jesus died to take away our sins. And you are glorious, full of all that is big and bright and beautiful. So receive our praise and worship now. Impress us again with what a great God you are. Amen. You may be seated. At this point, we are going to uh, invite children. I think it's age three through seven in the summer season. Am I right on that? So kids three through seven, we're going to invite you to children's worship, but let me offer a brief prayer for our kids in, in that time together. Lord, thank you that you created children, that you love them, that you welcome them to come to you. So we pray now that you would bless the children, that in their own way, at their own level, they would meet you, learn about you, and worship you. Bless the children's worship leaders, and may all of this, too, be pleasing in your sight. Amen. So kids can head out at this time. And then we're, we're going to receive our offering while uh, they head out. Um, we have two offerings this morning, as, first as usual for our general ministry. Uh, I just want to say a few words about our second, which is the Institute for Christian Studies. Um, we have a lot of Christian colleges to educate and point people in all realms of life to Christ. Uh, the Institute of Christian Studies sort of has a unique place. It, it's uniquely uh, a graduate school uh, from a Christian and Reformed perspective. It's in Toronto. And just this further note, uh, John Volk, our John, um, is a graduate of the Institute for Christian Studies, and he's actually on the board and is chairing the board at this point in kind of an exciting transitional time. Uh, they have a board meeting this Tuesday, I noticed, and he'll be there uh, chairing that. So let's... Uh, bring our offerings for our gospel ministry, and then also ICS. we gather in God's presence, we acknowledge that he's beautiful, but also a holy God who cannot tolerate wrong, who hates all sin and wrongdoing to one another. We're going to reflect uh, a bit of uh, his expression of his will and then have a prayer of confession together. 
First of all, from Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4, rich words. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any compassion from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition nor vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. That's quite a challenge, and let's offer a prayer of confession together. God Almighty, you know all things. You know our hearts through and through. We cannot hide anything from you. You know every thought and word and deed we've done this past week. And we humbly confess that we haven't always pursued unity with one another, to be one in love, to share one spirit in Christ and one purpose in him. At times we can be selfish, wanting our own way, or being ambitious for our reputation. And at times we've considered ourselves better than others rather than acting with humility. We confess often we, we naturally look, look to our own interests first and leave the interests of others a distant second. So Lord Jesus, have mercy on us who continue to struggle with sin Forgive us of every sin of thought and word and deed. And by your Spirit, may we grow in love and humility and selflessness that serves others. We pray this through Christ. Amen. Receiving God's grace is always an amazing and wonderful thing. Hear these words of assurance. By faith in Jesus and by the blood of the cross, you have a complete forgiveness of all your sins. And we respond to God's grace. We want to dedicate our lives to please him. Let's uh, respond with, make me a channel of your peace.
One of the privileges we have as God's people is coming to him in prayer uh, anytime, but especially together on a, a Sunday morning like this. I just have one um, announcement, and then we're going to have uh, Brooke Boonstop will come up and say a word of thanks uh, on behalf of the youth group. Um, but the one thing just to mention is this Tuesday, a, a subcommittee from council will be meeting to uh, look over uh, a slate of names that we'll present to council to serve on our pastor uh, search team that we're planning to get rolling in September. So just uh, ask for your special prayers for us that we have wisdom. You know, it's always an interesting thing uh, developing a pastor search team. You want it to have um, representatives of as much of the diversity and range of the congregation. So balancing all kinds of features um, can take a little thought and wisdom. So we appreciate your, your prayers on that. Brooke, come on up. July 3, which we missed, unfortunately. So the YP Serve Group just wants to thank everyone for your support of our barbecue that we had on Canada Day. And thank you to Roger for barbecuing. Um, we raised almost $900, and your donations mean a lot to us. And as we serve in Massachusetts on August 5th to 12th, we would great, greatly appreciate all of your prayers. Thank you. Thanks, Brooke. Um, how many are going on the SERVE project in Massachusetts? Six, okay. All right. And uh, is the team just from our church, or does it involve people from other churches too? Okay, all right. Well, that'll be something we'll be keeping in mind and praying for as that uh, time nears. Let's pray together. Jesus, in your word, you have said, be thankful. And you've taught us, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. So we take time together as your people to do that right now. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for life and health and peace. Thank you for this lovely time of year with warm temperatures and all green things in full glory. Thank you for a good school year uh, of learning, and, and now thank you for vacation time to enjoy. And Lord Jesus, you who love children, we, we thank you again for a great VBS week with 50-some uh, precious kids to interact with and, and love. Sovereign Lord, now we uh, do ask, uh, as your people, for continued provision for us in the days ahead. Uh, we pray for every person and family living in our community that is walking in spiritual darkness. Uh, maybe they don't know that they're separated from the living God and will face him on the judgment day. Uh, maybe they don't know the love and mercy and hope of life in Christ. So Holy Spirit, uh, blow through our neighborhood, through our community, opening many eyes to see their need of the Savior. And Lord Jesus, position our church to be part of the harvesting of souls, so precious to you. May we as a congregation be accessible, welcoming, a living embodiment of the gospel to all. And we pray that families with kids who came to VBS would be moved, those who don't have a church home, to, to come on Sunday and, and learn more about Jesus. And Jesus, in this time of transition, prepare us to receive a new pastor in due time. Uh, we pray even now for a good and faithful pastor who will point us to Jesus and his love and all of his benefits for us. Bless the, the threesome that meets Tuesday to present a slate of names to council to serve on our pastor's search team. Uh, Lord, uh, send your spirit to guide that complicated process and, 
We pray even now for a team full of energy and vision and wisdom. Lord, we pray for uh, students who are serving in summer jobs. May they be willing workers. Uh, and if their job is dull at times, remind them of the value of education and pursuing their true talents. We remember our cousin, Christian Reformed Churches in the Maritimes. Today we especially pray for the student ministry at Dalhousie University in Halifax. Lord, we know there are thousands upon thousands of young people uh, who are at the crossroads in life with new independence, learning, uh, perhaps having the Christian faith challenged or dismissed in certain classrooms, uh, young people making decisions on their own. So we pray for that strategic ministry that, that you'd raise up a new pastor as Reverend Dan Brown moves to Kingston, Ontario. And finally, we pray for our world that needs uh, our prayers, that your kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. We are aware that G20 nations met this past week. And as always, there's plenty of jockeying for influence. But we pray that every nation would not be seeking advantage at the expense of other people, but rather that Canada and every nation would seek justice and mercy and love for our neighbor. And Lord, we trust that when we do, all people will flourish and your great purposes will be experienced. And as always, we thank you that you know and care for each one of us. And so we lift up all of our personal needs, joys, hopes, fears to you. We thank you that in your care, we ultimately have nothing to fear. And we pray all this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to prepare for God's Word. This morning I'm beginning a, a major new sermon series. Uh, the kind of tagline is the communion of saints. And we're going to be looking at at least a half dozen one another commands in the New Testament, how it is that we're uh, to live together. So to prepare our hearts, let's uh, stand for a song of illumination. seated. As Andrea is coming forward, our passage this morning has a lot of really tricky Greek names, and I didn't want to put that on anyone, so Andrea's going to offer the prayer, and I'm going to, I'm going to read the passage with those names. Um, okay, so let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today and just say, Thank you for letting us be here, letting us be together and worship together. 
be there for each other. And I pray that you'll just bless Pastor Neil as he reads this passage and as he presents the sermon to us, that we can just um, hear your word, Lord, and bring it to our daily life. In your name I pray. Amen. So our passage is Romans chapter 16, the first 16 verses, and as always, I encourage you to keep your uh, Bibles open as I uh, proclaim his word. Romans chapter 16. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Kentre. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need from you. For she has been a great help, a benefactor of many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risk their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful for them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend Eponidas, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachus. Greet Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who work very hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the other brothers and sisters with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the Lord's people who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send their greetings. And this is the word of the Lord. In the course of a day, we... I usually cross paths with people and uh, then begins uh, a common basic social ritual. We make eye contact, uh, we may smile at them, often we shake hands and we exchange greetings. Good morning, hello, how are you? And, and we often meet some of the same people, so a greeting can be pretty routine. We may exchange the greetings without even breaking stride. Hi, how are you? And, and we don't even expect anything more than fine. Here in Romans 16, uh, the Apostle Paul gives a long list of greetings. In fact, he greets no less than 16 different people or sets of people. And perhaps you may think that the first half of Romans 16 is not very interesting. Sort of reads like a genealogy, all these names that we're not familiar with. Not very important. But a greeting can mean a great deal. When we greet someone, we acknowledge them. In a small way, we say they're important. They're important enough for us to pay them some attention. In a small way, we affirm them. And so Paul writes, greet one another with a holy kiss. 
Now, uh, in our culture, uh, a kiss might not be the best thing, but a greeting, yes. I remember helping to interview candidates for ministry in the Christian Reformed Church, and at one point in the day's schedule, uh, we took a break for refreshments in the seminary courtyard. And by the time I got out there, uh, everyone was already talking in pairs or little circles, and I just didn't see anywhere that, that I could sort of naturally join in. Now, I don't think of myself as an insecure person, and, and I knew plenty of people there, but to be standing all alone felt pretty awkward. At that point, a greeting would have been very welcome. And think of Jesus' disciples huddled behind locked doors in fear after he had been seized and, and crucified. Think of them. Then Jesus comes and greets them. Peace be with you. Imagine what that greeting meant for them. You know, one of the biggest turnoffs for a guest in church is not mediocre music or poor preaching. The biggest turnoff is nobody greeted me. Nobody really welcomed me. And that's why many churches designate greeters at uh, worship services. You know, it's interesting, I don't know if you've noticed this, but it seems that lately even huge corporations have seen the importance of, of, of a personal greeting. Uh, I think of Walmart, at least in the States, uh, they have friendly people, they hire friendly people to stand at the entrance and greet shoppers. Uh, they know that uh, we all like to buy things at reasonable prices, but we all like to be greeted as well. Now, a, a church should never leave greetings to just a select few. Uh, Paul in his writings doesn't say designate some to be teachers and some to be greeters. No, here he urges all of the Roman Christians Greet one another, without exception. In a spirit-filled church, everyone will extend warm greetings to those around them. And let me add this. Uh, the more personal the greeting, the more impact it has. Uh, some of you know by now, I'm, I'm the middle of three boys in my family, and uh, we weren't that far spaced out. And so some adults had a difficult time telling us apart. And so sometimes at church, uh, you know, kind of one would come by and, you know, kind of take a look at you, and you can see the wheels turning in their heads, and they don't really know which of you it is. <laughs> And they say, well, ah, you're one of the Jaspers boys. Well, that's, that's okay, got my last name right. But, but much better is being greeted as Neil. So the more personal the greeting, the more impact it has. Greet one another. And I, wanna, I want you to really catch this transition. Uh, in studying the Greek word that Paul uses, uh, we discover that uh, there's much more to it than our usual usage of greeting. I mean, greetings may be uh, brief and sort of done in passing as we're each cruising our own direction, but, but here's a second facet of the biblical word, and that's to offer a real welcome. A welcome. A welcome is more than just a greeting. A welcome places uh, its arm around someone and draws them in. A, a welcome expresses a certain acceptance and says, I'd like to spend some time with you. A welcome invites someone into your home. It's part of 
hospitality. And of course, truly welcoming someone, that, that takes a little more than just a greeting. It takes effort, it takes initiative. Uh, it takes getting outside of ourselves in our comfort zone. And it's certainly true that some people are more extroverted and, and they're uh, naturally better at welcoming, but, but again, everyone is called to greet one another and welcome, practice hospitality, to the best of our ability. And we see that Paul appeals to the whole church, not just some gifted in this area. For example, he says, receive Phoebe and give her uh, any help that she may need. Think about that. That's quite a welcome as Phoebe arrives in Rome and interacts with the church. You know, a genuine welcome, uh, it can be a powerful thing. I think of the superb film, probably produced around 1980, called The Elephant Man. In it, uh, in the late 1800s, a London physician spotted the picture of a hideously deformed creature on the marquee sign of a freak exhibition. And out of scientific curiosity, Dr. Treves wanted to have a first-hand look. So he entered the door, walks through a long, dark hallway, enters the room, and a showman barks for the freak to stand up. And this is what Dr. Treves observed, his clinical observations. The most striking feature was his enormous and misshapen head. On the top of the skull were a few long hairs the growth of the forehead almost occluded one eye. The circumference of the head was no less than a man's waist. Another mass of bone protruded from the mouth like a pink stump, turning the upper lip inside out and making of the mouth a mere slobbering aperture. The face was no more capable of expression than a gnarled block of wood. And Treves was so fascinated with this poor creature that he brought him to a hospital. Now, quite sure that he was an imbecile, Treves discovered that he was quite mistaken. This, this creature was intelligent and sensitive and kind. And he had a name, John Merrick. And soon Treves and Merrick became good friends. Uh, Merrick began to recover some health as he was in a more secure environment. But Treves noticed that, that something seemed to be keeping him back from being emotionally whole. And so after considering what he might do, he decided to invite John Merrick to visit a widow friend of his, as sort of the first step of being introduced to a, a circle of friends that could enrich his life in some way. And the step he knew was risky because most people recoiled in horror at the first sight of the elephant man. But when Dr. Treves introduced John Merrick, the widow graciously wished him a good morning. And she smiled at him, and then she took his hand in hers for a moment. And when John Merrick let her hand go, he rested his huge head on his knees and began to sob. Later, Treves learned why. She was the first woman who'd ever smiled at him. She was the first woman who'd ever shaken hands with him. She was the first woman in all these years of her, his life who really welcomed him. And that moment, from then on, he gradually changed from a hunted freak to a human being. 
greet one another with a holy kiss. And here it's important to notice the, the physical dimension. I mean, the widow's touch was so important for Merrick. Uh, a simple touch or, or a hug of welcome, oh, it can break through distance and barriers. And, and every society, including ours, has a set of untouchables who long for the touch of a genuine welcome. Greet one another. Here's a, a third facet of this biblical word uh, and, and concept, and that is to acclaim. To acclaim. Paul, of course, is writing to, to, to the church in Rome, and of course there, there, there they were used to the masses who, who would sometimes acclaim a victorious Roman general returning from the battlefield. And of course, God's people should be wary of hero worship and fueling vanity and pride. But biblical acclaim, Paul is saying greet one another, including acclamation, biblical acclaim that is, is sound and sincere is an important part of our life together. Let me say that again. Biblical acclaim that's sound and sincere is important in our life together. You see, a claim goes further, it goes a step further than a welcome. It highlights kingdom accomplishments. And again, Paul models that in our passage. You'll see if you, you look closely, with many of his greetings, he adds a word of a claim. I'll give you a few examples. Receive Phoebe for she has been a great help, a, a benefactor to many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila. Uh, they risk their lives for me. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. I mean, isn't that encouraging and uplifting? Friends, a claim is crucial for a healthy church. You know, let's be honest, uh, no matter how secure, no matter how accomplished, how, however much we have our act together, all of us need some acclaim and affirmation. And I'm, I'm especially thinking right now of uh, leaders in the church, uh, workers in the church who work long and hard serving in some part of our life and ministry together. I mean, without any words of appreciation or acclaim, it's easy to, to begin to think, well, is what I'm doing and all this extra time I'm taking, is it making any difference? Is it worth it? And then it's easy, subtly, to become less motivated if you don't think it's really making a difference. We're more subject to burnout but a claim, an affirmation. That's like oxygen in the lungs of a runner. Thanks for your faithful service on council. Or you did a great job as a GEMS counselor. You were kind and, and thoughtful. You made a difference in my daughter's life. I mean, just a few words of a claim can strengthen us to carry on God's good purposes. So let me ask you, how readily do you acclaim others as God's word calls for? Your pastor, your elders, Sunday school or youth leader, parents, your children, or other friends. Then finally, a fourth facet of biblical greeting and all that it means, and that's to cherish. To cherish. So beyond the acknowledgement of a greeting, beyond the acceptance of a welcome, beyond the acclaim of accomplishments is the deep affection for someone you cherish. And notice uh, the acclaim, 
That's the third facet. Given in, in several of Paul's greetings, it spills over into deep affection. Listen, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ. Greet my dear friend, Eponidas. Greet Amplius, whom I love in the Lord. Greet Rufus and his mother, who has been a mother to me. Oh, how Paul cherished these people. You know, cherishing uh, one another uh, in life and words, um, it's an entire ministry in itself. I mean, unless you're emotionally stone cold, you can still feel the warmth of Paul's words here and how touching it is. I mean, to be cherished and to hear it, that's good medicine for the heart and soul. You know, and it's interesting that when we, when we cherish one another, we're really reflecting uh, the the deep affection within the Trinity between the three divine persons. The church reflects the Trinity in this sense. Think of when Jesus was rising from the water after his baptism in the Jordan. The Father's voice, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. That's God the Father cherishing his son. <clears throat> I want to close with this. Sin and selfishness can so easily uh, tear us apart. If you read any periodicals, newspapers, church magazines, you, you know, you're always hearing about different tensions, conflicts, splits in one direction or another. I um, I once visited a, a man uh, who had uh, dropped out of church many, many years ago. And from the conversation, I gathered that he still saw himself as a Christian who believed the Bible, but he had totally given up on the church. So I asked him, <clears throat> what about the Bible's teaching summarized in the Apostles' Creed? Uh, what about... I What about the Bible's teaching summarized in the Apostles' Creed? What about, I believe in the Holy Spirit? What about, I believe the, whole, the communion of saints? So I kind of pose this. Well, he right away responded, trouble is, I never met any saints in the church. I never met any saints in the church. And that as I left, uh, seemed so, so sad. So brothers and sisters, by the power of the Holy Spirit, greet one another in every sense of the word. When you do, you imitate Jesus and his apostle, Paul. When you do, you please God. When you do, you build up the communion of saints. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for the Apostle Paul still to this day and how he uh, was a conduit of your inspired revelation. Thank you in particular for the model of greeting that he presents to us. And we pray that we would imitate that, that example in, in our life together. May this be a community where our greetings um, richly flow to one another, and not just uh, the, the beginning hello, but in ways that we welcome each other, uh, not just uh, on Sunday morning, but into our lives, into our, our fellowship. Pray that this would be true in how we acclaim one another, and uh, accomplishments in your kingdom and that this would be true in how we cherish one another. So Lord, this is um, uh, a wonderful call. Uh, we know it's not easy, but so we pray for the power of your Holy Spirit 
uh, to help us fulfill this calling from you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to respond with uh, the song, They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love. And it just kind of speaks to the, the quality of our life together. Let's stand as we sing. seated one more time. Over these few months, we have taken time in a service toward the beginning of the month to share glimpses of grace. And it's just a good habit, I think, for God's people to us be alert and sharing, honoring God um, by that. Um, and to do this together, uh, Glimpses need to be your glimpse, personal, uh, specific, um, brief, so others have an opportunity, and then audible. And uh, Rob Brown's going to be our courier today, bringing you around a mic if you uh, do want to raise your hand. But let's, um, let's begin by reciting together Romans 8, verse 32, which is really our theme verse for this habit. Let's say together, He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? So as I've done uh, past times of glimpses, I'm just going to prime the pump in sharing uh, one really for Ruth and me. Uh, many of you have asked about our trip, and it was a great trip. Um, <clears throat> but it started out in kind of a dangerous way. Uh, we were just getting on uh, the, the main highway south of Fredericton, and I'm in the left lane, there's another big pickup truck to the right of us, and all of a sudden this big, heavy, lumbering truck was coming on, merging on to the right lane. And so this pickup truck uh, figured, you know, rather than hit the brakes, he needed to move over a lane. But I think we must have been in the dead spot for him. So all of a sudden, I see this pickup truck moving right at us into our lane. And I, I reacted, moving over a little bit. But just then, before we collided, he must have seen us and kind of moved back into his lane. And <clears throat> later, he 
gave kind of an apologetic wave as we were <laughs> driving down. But, but I thought just a moment like that, it could have been uh, just a deadly accident and uh, God's, by God's grace, uh, protected and spared to enjoy the whole week. And I think of all the people, you know, traveling during the summertime, it's a grace that uh, God gives us safety in that. So we're just going to see if there's anyone else who uh, would like to share a glimpse to honor God in this way, if there's anybody willing to do that. Tylee. Uh, so when Isaac was a week old, we got a call from the hospital um, telling us that they needed to repeat his newborn screening blood work for genetic diseases. So um, when he was, uh, we had to wait till he was two weeks old and we had to go back to the hospital and they, they wanted the um, cystic fibrosis test repeated. So then we had to wait another week and um, we, it, it was negative but it was a two weeks waiting period of not knowing, so. And they want you to repeat it, you're probably really wondering. Yeah, so. Yeah. Thanks be to God for his yes, grace Yes, thanks there. be to God. Anyone else this morning? Yeah, get to the mic. <laughs> Do you think Hannah wants to share a glimpse of grace there too? So God's grace working in lives. We're just at a, a period. Uh, there's an openness and an interest in learning about Jesus. Thanks be to God. Anyone else? Uh, George. Nope, just talk. Oh, just just talk. Hold, it, hold it close. And okay, talk about grace. By the grace of God, I was born in Holland into a Christian family. We had lots of brothers and sisters, so there was eight, eight of our children. And later on in life, after God helped us survive through the Second World War, we didn't see much of a future there, being from a very, very poor family. And by the grace of God, we heard about Canada. We were already very thankful for, to the Canadians who liberated us, but then they were even good enough to let us into this country. And then again, God's grace showed us very plainly that I met a good looking, good Christian wife, a girlfriend, she became a wife for 55 years. And we lived in Ontario for eight years and by God's grace, where we couldn't get a start on a farm in Ontario, by God's grace, we came to New Brunswick and five more children came. And the start wasn't hard, but God was always there and he helped us to the poor years. We've had a good life together, but even later on, we suffered some setbacks. We went through a flood and we went through a big, big fire. I lost my successor and then I lost my, my wife, but by the grace of God, we're still here. Thank you. Thanks, George. That's uh, a lot of grace over a lifetime. Maybe you have time for one more if there's anyone who would like to share something. Tex. <clears throat> this might not sound very important, but we have a fellow that looks after our plowing and uh, we have a new neighbor who had a disagreement with him 
and didn't want to pay him. And we knew that was probably an unjustified misunderstanding, but I spoke to the neighbor a couple of days ago and he said, look, when I see him, I'll kind of remind him how good this guy is to us. And uh, sometimes I'm not as diplomatic as I can be. And Bonnie says, and neither was the neighbor I spoke to. And Bonnie said, well, I'll talk to him. I'm going to go over tomorrow and talk to him. And my neighbor said, well, I'll talk to him. I said to Bonnie, well, I think maybe you would be the one to talk. And I got a call in the morning from our fellow that plows. And he said, I got a call. And the fellow apologized for not paying his share and they wanted to meet for coffee and straighten it all out. And oh. it was this neighbor who I thought was even less diplomatic than me <laughs> had gone over and yeah. it was just, God intervened. Wonderful. You know? Yeah. And I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> she didn't have to. <laughs> God's grace. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Uh, if it's brief, we'll get the microphone back there. What are you happy about? That I'm alive. That you're alive. Okay, say it. That I'm alive. Yeah. That I'm alive. Yeah. She was in a. She was hit by a car. Okay. So I can relate to that um, in a different way. Thanks be to God. Let's, um, let's respond with a couple of verses from Amazing Grace. Uh, let's do that. Let's uh, stand together. The Lord As we go from here, I'll first invite the worship team up front. So they're set. As we go from here, I want to invite everyone to stay for a time of uh, fellowship, uh, coffee afterward, and as we seek to serve the Lord and, and greet one another, receive his words of blessing. Brothers and sisters, now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.